Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric and in today's video we are going to discuss how to use the newly released warehouse connector. The warehouse connector is being given into Dataflow Gen 2 which can directly write into the warehouse. Prior to that we were using a Synapse connector to write there as in a workaround which is not needed now. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a data where we will also do some power query transformation or data flow transformation, which is pivot data, unpivot data and transform data and load that data and observe how it's going to behave in data flow gen 2 and warehouse and we will look at how much time these operations will take. So let's jump onto the app.powerbi.com as you are aware app.powerbi.com is also the home for fabric now to begin this journey i would like to create a new data flow gen 2 into my workspace and the workspace which i'm going to use today is uh, the workspace 01 fabric so i clicked on the workspace on the left hand side and then i say 01 fabric inside the 01 fabric i'm going to click on new and then i need to use show all and i'll come to and here and i'll use data flow gen 2. once i click on data flow gen 2 it will open a new data flow i cannot rename a data flow when it is opened for first time only after saving it for the first time i can come back and rename it now to bring in the file we are going to bring the file from git my famous git files let me tell you um, github.com amit chandak amit chandak pbi power bi is where you're going to get all these files here if you scroll little bit down you should be able to see a pivot data.xls and you need to click on that once you click on the pivot data.xls there is a download button don't click download right click on that and say copy link the link would be very similar to this link instead of blob you will get a raw and that's what the link I need. Now, how to use it in data flow gen 2? Click on get data, more, and then here search web. We will use web API. Give the URL here and credential should be anonymous. There is, should not be any need of data gateway. When we are connecting with a web source, we should not need any data gateway. If we are needing a data gateway, it means this web connector is not working as expected or this is not supported without a data gateway. So let's go ahead and press next next button on the right bottom. Now here once you come in you need to take three tables for today's work. So pivot data which is pivot now the data is already pivoted data. pivot means the data is already pivot i need to unpivot it then we will take unpivot here data is already unpivoted basically the sales and the margin are the major which should have been on the column they are on the rows and third one is the transpose as you can see the data is transpose the data is in rows and we need to transform this okay so this is how the data looks like right now and let's go ahead and create this one and see what happens now data has been loaded in data flow and before i progress i'll show you the new destination which has come so under the home tab add destination now you can see warehouse this is the option which we are going to use today but before that we would like to do some transformation and see how these transformation will happen and how we can use the power of data flow gen 2 the power query very well known to the power bi world here and how we are going to utilize that so now this data when we look at the pivot data what is the problem with this data so you see the subjects are they are on the columns right now we always want our subjects on on a row basically maths then 90 marks physics then 98 marks like this so for that there are two options to do it uh, means inside one option only inside the transform we can unpivot this data uh, using the unpivot columns or unpivot other columns now when to use unpivot column means I, if i select these columns and then i use this unpivot column it can decide one of the two options so to select you can press shift and maths and shift english and then you go here and click 
it will you can use one of the two or three options now unpivot data will decide one of the two options below now whenever i have the fixed number of columns which need to be unpivoted even in the future then i'm going to use unpivot selected column but if let's say number of subjects can change you say today i have five tomorrow i can have seven but my name is going to remain fixed then i'll use unpivot other column by clicking on name but if you say no name can be added with age but the subjects are going to remain fixed then you use unpivot selected column in my case i assume name is going to remain fixed and the subjects can add upon so i only click on name and i say unpivot other columns now once i do it it is get converted into name attributes and values it automatically identified the date type but i need to rename these columns to avoid the rename of these columns what i can do here is i can click on attribute and call it as subject and value as marks please remember don't change unless you are aware that this what is going to be the impact of that change in power query some of these changes cannot be done unless you are aware where i can change or where i cannot change so this is my table which is ready and i should be able to match it map it with my destination which is warehouse now i go to the another table we'll do the transformation completely and then we'll check it out what need to be done so i go to the unpivot data this data is unpivoted ideally speaking sales is a major margin is a major they should have been on the columns they are on the rows that's the problem how to deal with it select major select values with shift or control then go to transform data under the transform data click on pivot data there are no two options only one option you have to tell which is the value column value column is the numeric column please remember there is only one type of aggregation is going to support okay you can click on the advance and you can see don't aggregate i'll show you what happens when i do don't aggregate and then i'll tell you what need to be done both sales and margin in my case are um, sales and margin amount values it means i can do sum if i do simply like this you will see there is an error the reason for this error is basic always click on space to check this error the reason for this error is i was having two values and it because of that so i will un cross this step so in power query if you don't like this step you can go on the right hand side where the query settings properties are there there are steps you can cross them and come back to the last step i removed it and this last two rows are the reason for that so if you see 24 and 25 they are the reason i was not able to do that i again select these two columns with the help of shift and or control i say pivot column i go to advance values and this time i say sum and i press okay now you can see my data is properly pivoted second set of data is ready we have pivoted the unpivoted data now time has come to look at the transpose data now right now it has not taken the first row as header and at this stage only we would like to try to transpose this the problem with this data is the these should have been the columns and these should have been the rows the things which are in the column should have been the rows and things which are in the row major sales and margin should have been the columns without doing any further changes to this data let's first of all go to the transform tab and in the transform tab we have transpose option we will click on the transpose option and you can see the data has been transformed into the proper shape but there is one challenge the first row is the header we don't have the header for that we will go to the home tab under the home tab we have this use first row as header there is a down arrow to uh, for few more option means you can use header as also the first row but i'm going to use the first option use first row as header and i got my headers now automatically change data type has been added by power query or by data flow gen 2 and this is what also i need in terms of data type seems everything seems to be correct to me time has come that i should go ahead and add the destination so i click on the pivot table under the home tab add destination i will go ahead and add the warehouse as the destination i'll say next i go to 01 fabric and here i have quite a few of them but i'm going to go to warehouse 2 and here i'll say pivot_df 
and I'll say next. Now, I don't need a URL. I don't need authentication in this case. This is the best advantage when I'm using the warehouse connector. If you remember previously when we have used the alternate, we have to provide the URL and we have to do authentication. And I have done the authentication of my login only. Okay, organizational ID. So Pivot has been uh, mapped. You can see the mapping here on the right hand side below. If I hover over here, it will show. Next one I need to do is for transpose. Again, either from add destination here or the add destination below, I can go and say I want to map it to warehouse click on next I have not been asked for any login or something warehouse 201 fabric transpose underscore df because I'm bringing it from data flow just to you know remember that from where the sources are coming because I'm recording quite a few videos and I just wanted to show you from where these things are coming so pivot has been mapped transpose has been mapped unpivot at destination on the top I'm using again warehouse i clicked on the warehouse here i'm not choosing anything in the connection warehouse connection zero one fabric i'm going to choose inside the zero one fabric warehouse two i'm going to rename the table as df underscore df next no need to change all the mappings are correct if the mappings are not correct something is unchecked please go ahead and correct the data type it might show you the reason why it is not mapped now in this one, the spaces are supported in the data flow gen two. the spaces are supported if you are going to go to warehouse for lake house spaces are not supported. So if you are going to lake house after doing these transformation, please be careful. You have to remove the spaces in the column name. Right now we don't have also make sure there is no space at the end. Sometime you might have not such a clean data. It might have that. Now I'm all set to publish this. So I'm going to press the publish button on the right bottom of my fabric and I'll click publish. And I should see data flow 18 coming here below little bit of scrolling I have done. And after the scrolling, I can see data flow 18 and this data flow 18 is right now getting published. So when this is ro revolving here, it is showing publish in progress. It means it's getting published. Once this is published, there is no error. You will see this image shift here in this area on the right hand side of, of where data flow gen two and my name is written. And there now you can see the image has shifted after the time. And you this means now the refresh is in progress. It means the data loading is happening. The data will be moved to the destination. So the publish has happened. The data flow gen two data would be moved to the destination after the transformation. We have done transformation today in data flow gen two, which are not just simple transformation like adding columns. We have the data which is not in proper shape and we are using fabric data flow gen two to put the data in a proper shape. Very powerful power query functions we are using pivot data unpivot data transform data we have given menus for that but we do have functions those who are following me on the power bi series we have discussed these function itself in there in the beginner tutorial series which contain more than 230 plus videos so please go ahead and explore that if you want to learn more of power query we are going to explore few of them in this series also data refresh is in progress and we should expect it to complete within few minutes and once this is done yes it is already been done while we are talking once this image is gone i always click on these three rows and this do contain an option refresh history i always go ahead and check it out what has happened it should be succeeded that's fine you can click and see what has happened here okay so it is giving showing you few options out here. You can check out these details if needed. And this has improved upon the uh, what we call the data flow where it is showing a lot more details. The errors have been containing more details. So this is a much better experience compared to what we had in the past. So now time has come that we should go ahead and check. Have we got our tables in the warehouse? We have used warehouse two. So let's scroll down the warehouse two would be here. 
Now warehouse two, I'm going to look at the warehouse. There is a data set also where it will get automatically added. I'm using the default data set. So unless you move out something from the default data set, it will be available there. So I can go here and check it out. What I need to see is my tables have come into the transform format, which is the expectation and should be true. Now let's go ahead and look at these three tables. Transpose DF is the table where I'm going to click and look at the data. And you can see the data has come, uh, the major date, sales and the margin. This is my trans transpose data. Let's look at the unpivoted data. Unpivoted data again contains sales and margin. Now let's look at the pivoted data. Pivoted DF. And you can see the pivoted DF is also working fine. Now let's quickly run a query here. Right click, new SQL, select top 100 rows. That's going to open a new SQL window for us. And there we can select this and run this. And we can remove this top 100 to see all the records. Now from below, we can, I can go to the data model and if there is some kind of mapping required, I can do this, but this data is just individual data right now. I am have just bring it to showcase you. So we will go to the data tab inside the data tab. The tabs are below here, data query and model. I will go to new report and would like to just analyze one of them to see how it is working on Power BI. So our favorite Power BI interface has opened. And now let's look at Pivot TF. And in this one, I have name, I have subject, and I have marks. This is this very similar table. But the advantage of what I've done is now I can have the subject as a slicer. I can click here as a new visual. So I, what I'm doing, I'm dragging and dropping it into empty space and then changing the slicer. Same way I can bring in name here, putting it into the empty space. Look, I'm putting it into the empty space. It creates a table because the data type is text for which by default the table will be created. For numeric, we get either a card or a bar depending on how we are dropping it. Now I can filter the name. The data will be filtered. I can filter the subjects or I can remove the filter on the name and I can see how people have performed in computer, chemistry, English, maths, and physics. I can also use a matrix visual. I can click here and I can click here on the matrix visual and inside the matrix visual, let me remove the filters. And then what I can do here is basically in the matrix, I have this name and subject. You can see very similar kind of a structure which we had there. So name is on the row, subject is on the column and I can change that also. I can move the subject here and the name here that I can do. And I can get different kind of structure. So what, that's the benefit of getting it into the rows. So we got the subject into the rows, so we can play around much more easily. We can get slicers on that. So why don't you go ahead and try these kind of transformation on your data flow gen two? I will give you the file link into the description in case you want me to explain more things in this particular series, please comment into the comment section of the video. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.